This time on Boneyard Revivals, it's a 283 small block Chevy teardown because we got to get it ready because it's time to make some more horsepower. And we have a project that it needs to go into because I blew up another motor. Nice. Hey, I'm Robert. Welcome to Boneyard Revivals. engine disassembly room with our small block Chevy 283 here now. Um, today we're going to be tearing it down and seeing do we actually have a bad cam. Um, as you guys know in the last video we bought it, you know, cleaned it up a little bit, kind of checked over everything, then tried to get it to run. Uh, kind of ran out of time at the end of that video so we kind of stuffed it back in the corner, um, but today we're going to be tearing it down. <music> Getting the intake loose here, and we should be. Yep, I think I actually have it loose enough where it might just come right off. Let's see, where can I grab on this guy? Yep, okay. There's the intake. Let's get our valve covers off, and uh, we'll get all of our rockers loose, and we'll start pulling out our push rods and our lifters and all that good stuff. Start with number one over here. Start pulling our nuts off. I don't know if we're gonna be reusing all this hardware. Um, so with that being also said, that kind of means I have to watch uh, where I place everything. I just don't wanna rip it all apart and throw it on the workbench and then not know what push rod, which rocker came from, from what, just cause it kind of make a mess down the road. So we're gonna go and do this cylinder by cylinder and place everything, you know, pretty much back where it came from, just so everything's, you know, all together, is we have our locking nut, like I just mentioned. What they also have is what we like to call the fulcrum ball. Uh, that's not worn too bad at all. So here's a rocker. Here's your fulcrum ball. It has that beveled curved edge that actually goes inside the rocker. So basically when the rocker is going back and forth, so if you imagine, you know, this is the tip of your valve, my pointer finger, and the, your push rod would be on this side that pushes on this end of the, uh, the rocker. So, you know, like I said, push rod on this end, obviously your lifter is up against your cam lobe. Your cam lobe comes up, pushes that lifter up, pushes the push rod up, which then, you know, actuates the opening of your rocker arm what you also want to do too on your push rods here, just check the ends if they're all wear, wore out and stuff, that's no good. Check the tip of your valve as well. If it's all mushroomed over, you got something going on there. But what I'm also doing is over on my toolbox, I'm cleaning up our push rods and I'm labeling where they came from. And the reason why is because there is a chance that the other can we put in it, these push rods will work. And if it saves us some money by cleaning these push rods up, throwing them back in, I'd much rather do that than have to spend for new push rods. So... All right, I for intake, and three for cylinder three, and we'll do that for every push rod. One other thing I figure I'd mention here, I haven't seen any yet, but you pull a push rod out and it looks like it's bent, this one's not. But what you can do here for, for, for a test to see if it is, get it on a flat surface area and just roll it. And if it's bent, you'll see it kind of wobble. Like I said, these, as far as all the ones that we pulled out so far, they all look good. All right, so we're over to our even bank here. Pulled everything off the odd bank side and everything looked good so far. So, so far so good. A little bit of crud built up in that one, but that'd clean up. Let's see, so you wanna also look at your wear points on your rocker as well. Um, like I said, we have the obviously the fulcrum point. Um, and then your push rod comes up through the back side here. So you want to look for wear in there 
Uh, and then also up here, this is where it rides on your valve. Like I said earlier, on your valve tip, you want to look too. Make sure it's not mushroomed over, like you don't want to see metal flake coming out past the actual like circumference of the valve. Then same thing for your push rod. Make sure there's no oil in it. But tip there looks pretty good. Look on that end. You don't want to see it where it looks like it's getting blown out, mushroomed over, any of that kind of stuff. And that one looks okay. So we will keep all of our hardware together on the heads, except the push rods. And we'll keep labeling our push rods. And now that we're over here on the even side, once again, looking at stuff, we'll, uh, we'll come back if I find anything or when we're done. Okay. All of our push rods are out. They're all labeled. Didn't see anything too scary there. What we're going to be doing next is I'm going to be draining the oil out of it. Um, and then probably be taking off the water pump and all that kind of stuff. Um, we'll take all of that stuff first. Let it make sure it's completely drained. I think we're going to open up the bottom end, pull the oil pan off to get a good look in there. And then I think lastly, we're going to pull the heads off. Um, a lot of there was a part of me that said I shouldn't even pluck the heads off at all, but I started thinking about it. If we end up slapping a new cam in this, <laughs> really should put valve springs in it. Um, and then also too, we'll end up taking all of our rockers. We're gonna try to, I think I'm gonna try to reuse the stock components just you know to keep it budget friendly. What I also want to do too is since these are pressing studs, I want to run you know straight ruler or something across these to make sure that none of our pressing studs are actually pulling out. Um, because you know, usually what can happen, and it's not something I think on stock cams, it's really not that, that big of a concern, but say if someone put in an aftermarket cam that has, you know, 450 lift or whatever, um, one of the concerning things that you would see with a push, with a press and stud like that, is that the cam actually has so much lift on it that when this nut, when your fulcrum ball and your fulcrum nut are tight, and it goes to create your, you know, your valve lift, what you'll actually see is because this is so tight, and all that pressure is pulling up on the rocker to push the valve down, it'll actually pull out your stud. Um, so that's something else double check out too. And then like I said, I think these heads are gonna go over to Joe over at Barn Performance Machine. I think we're gonna cut the valve job. Uh, we might even, we might even, we'd even surface some. Yeah, cut down the CCs a little bit, make a little bit more compression, you know what I'm saying? So she'll be a good little running unit, but let's drain the oil out of it. some silver undertone there. Is there magnetic? I don't know if that's magnetic or not. That plug might not be. Cool if the bolt would come out all the way. There it is. Sheesh. So, here's what else we can do though. We'll pull that guy out. We'll let that filter drain. Let's see what do we got in here as far as Definitely a little bit of something in there. Do we have any all the way down in the bottom? No, I don't see any. But like I said, we'll let this let this filter drain. We'll cut this bad boy open, see if we can find any clues to the puzzle in that. That one just not coming out all the way, I guess. Oh, it is out all the way. It's just kind of stuck in it. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to we're gonna reuse this water pump or not i feel like it'd just be a better option to just go get a new one just so we know that we're good but we'll cross that bridge when we get there all right we got our puller set up let's see if we can get off the harmonic balancer here there she is right off the edge of the crank snout just like that like i said it's a press in so it doesn't actually have a bolt that goes in through the center of the crank that was a special 283 thing. Or, or it's not. She's a little stuck. She's gonna need a little, she's gonna need some help. There we go. 
There we go. Just a little stuck. Holy smokes, it's the bottom end. Anything in the... Oh. Oh. Something broke in here. It's, um... <laughs> what is that? There is way too much of it, too. What on earth happened here, boys? Okay, we're gonna set this down. <laughs> Can we get our timing cover off here? Oh, that'd do it. That would explain the mist. Bam, there it is. End of story. So this top timing gear here has this like nylon plasticky deal. You see how much slap is in this? It's been skipping time. That's what's wrong with it. The only question is how much of that ran through the bearings and stuff though. Oh man. Yep, this is why she wouldn't run. Blew apart the timing gear, pretty much. Like I said, there's that plasticky stuff on it. Nylon, whatever it is. I'm like, look how much slack's in that. She's whooped. So yeah, basically, it was just jumping time. Look at that. How much plays in that? <laughs> that is insane. All right, well, we'll go ahead and pull that off. And then pull the timing chain off. And I guess we can slip the cam out. I have to pull the lifters out first, though. But, yeah, bottom end's all here. Like I said, we'll spin it over a bunch, but don't see anything too concerning. Our pickup is actually rather clean. The only thing that concerns me is the oil pan. Look at all that garbage. And I just hope and pray that it didn't run through the bottom end bearings and just wipe them all out. So we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. All right, there she is. Let's see, this is a GM. This is probably the stock cam. Yep, GM 22. I don't see a casting on it if it came out of a foundry or something. So I'm going to assume that this is the original stock cam out of this engine. Let's see, cam bearings. Uh, oh, they look okay. Okay, certain, because if it, if it threw all that garbage in there, how much of it ran through the engine and everything else. Because if you were lucky, when it broke, it all just dropped straight into the pan, hypothetically speaking. So, maybe we're okay. Oh, man. But, yeah, we'll flip it over. We will get the lifters out. And then it's time to pull the cylinder heads off this bad boy. Alright, so we pulled all of our lifters out. And besides them being stuck in the bore a little bit, there is nothing wrong. They all consistently look like that. Which isn't bad. Alright, all of our bolts are out. We're ready to see if we can pluck some heads off okay there's that one getting off bell pen is going to be the challenge flat tops in these flat top like that like i said cut the heads down man you'd be able to do a lot of neat stuff for on the cheap like i said if we can keep this whole build you know from where we're at now to finished product in a vehicle running if we can do it for like hopefully around a thousand bucks like i said we're gonna try to cheat on some stuff um just to kind of keep the the budget friendly but damn man I didn't realize that these came with pretty much a flat top from factory. So you learn something new every day. Oh, there it is. Oh. 
Look at them pistons. Oh, I love it. I'm so used to tearing apart mid to mid 70s and mid 80s 350s, and all you see is the hyper utestic dog dish pistons, which are just, I mean, they're pistons, they do piston stuff, but oh, yeah, look at that. Ooh, something was beating the top of that one up at one point. Well, there you have it. There's our teardown on our 283 small block Chevy. Um, really happy to see that it didn't wipe out a cam or a lifter, mostly because it would have sent all, all of that metal straight through the oiling system. There is a chance, a very slim chance that when all of this broke, it just went right down in the pan like we found evidence of it being in the pan. The only thing that does concern me is it ground the heck out of some of these teeth. So uh, if we're lucky, all of it went right to the bottom of the pan and stayed there, but there still is a chance that it ran through the rest of the engine which probably means before we start building this thing i might be pulling main caps off and pulling bearings out just to double check everything make sure that we don't have a completely wiped out um you know main bearing but if all of that checks out and it's good it's bottom end is going to stay the way it is so now that we know that there's flat tops um i'm kind of thinking that maybe we deck the heads and like we take like a little extra out See if we can get that compression number up until like, you know, like the mid nines. <laughs> so basically with that being said, that once again changes the whole build. And instead of being a budget friendly-esque build, we're still going to try to keep it budget friendly. But the cost is going to go up a little bit. And I think we're just going to have Joe over at Barn Performance Machine completely go through the heads. Um, thinking about bumping up the valve size too. Uh, and then getting some more squeeze out of it, like I said, by cutting them. Uh, so it'd be new valves, new valve springs, valve seals. I'm going to try to keep the Preston studs. The cam that we have picked should work really, really well with our Preston studs. So we shouldn't have to do the upgrade into the screw-in studs. You're going to have to stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that entire build process, which will be the next time you see this engine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to get out in the shop and start wrenching on your projects because your dreams will not work unless you do. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Boneyard Revival.